suure, no, me ei taama härra, et reivet varhäri taag, kus ei su konga. Deetaager, et inom omrodet kolvar, ene siio kolvar, kolvara löösnud. Ja hääs telekord, me nähdab peel, Pirita Lindholm, et niita fuseelane toog, et me jääb peel, et ta lõndo, oo see komedaat taal om kolvar, ene siio kanti. Kuna te su konga õudes ka, Ohoere hän, se onhan teitä, että jäävät anforelle ja englanska, se oli lettere, kuten teillä aktiivia todetaan. Hän oli esimerkiksi, että se on pleasure to be here this morning. I will talk about the sustainable energy future. Energy by itself is a very important thing. As you understand, if you have too little energy or too more, too much energy, you have really, may have adverse environmental consequences. Thinking just on the developing countries, but too little energy. They, they cause very often, by, by using the local energy sources too much, they, they cause uh, environmental damage. Or thinking on our, our societies, where most of the energy is based on fossil fuels, uh, the, the too much energy use, that leads to very adverse effects, uh, for instance, the climate change. Uh, I will tackle the, the energy future in, in a few ways. Let me just outline my presentation. I will sp speak of uh, the first of the uh, global drivers in energy. And, that's the energy environment thing. I think it's important to recognize that energy is a truly uh, global issue. Of course, you have to act on a local level, no question. You have to look on local solutions, as, as you do here in this conference, but it's important to understand the big picture, because there's very strong global drivers which will influence also the local solutions. Now, the next point is, is that I think what is important is to recognize that, that innovations and technology are important for change. I think uh, you, you can't think on incremental improvements. Through a kind of incrementalism, you will not end up with a sustainable future. So you need to look for more radical solutions. And, and we speak maybe about paradigm shifts, where innovation and technology plays a very important role. So I will touch the question of technology and innovation uh, quite much as well, to tell about the, the different uh, uh, options that we have. But at the very end, uh, when we speak about climate change mitigation or energy future, it's not just about you know, environment. But I think we need to link also the economic development with that. Uh, combating the poverty or combating uh, the unemployment is very important. So speaking about green economy will be important. Sustainable energy, green economy is about economy. So, so I will talk just at the very uh, end, a few words about the link of economy and energy, because I think uh, the sustainable energy may be also a partial solution to many of the economic problems. Yeah. And at the very end, I understand that the next speaker is a very distinguished speaker on uh, Baltic Sea Region Cooperation. I will touch a few things on, on uh, possible cooperation and cooperative arrangements within the Baltic Sea Region. So that's briefly my outline of my presentation. Now let's start with the... Uh, right. Yes, this one. But about the... Big drivers. The first big driver is, is based on the fact that the world is very asymmetric. Asymmetry in richness, wealth of energy. In this picture you see the country is on the northern hemisphere and the country is on the southern hemisphere. The countries uh, which are dark, they use very much energy. And those countries which have the light color, they use much less energy. We may say that, that we here in the north <coughs> use about 10 times more energy than those people in the south. Now, you may understand that when, when uh, the, the uh, less developed countries uh, grow in, in, in prosperity, and I think they will grow, it's, it's evident that everybody would like that, uh, they will climb the energy ladder. Climbing the energy ladder means that the, the very often, historically, see the, the wealth and energy growth goes hand in hand. So when the economy grows, the energy demand grows. So if, if you just look on this picture, it means that if we would level out the wealth, and let's say that the southern hemisphere would be about as rich as we are here at the northern hemisphere, and let's assume for the time being that we take the same path as, as uh, uh, they agreed it in the past, it would mean that the energy demand would grow by a factor of two to three by, by the, the uh, mid of this century. Factor two to three by the end of mid of this century, based mainly on fossil fuels. 80% uh, of world energy is fossil fuels, oil, gas, and, and uh, coal uh, that cause these adverse environmental effects, climate change, and so on. So it means that if we don't do anything, if we just let it go at its, as business as usual, it means that we will end up with big troubles. So let's see on the big troubles here, what we are in phase. 
The big pro problem is number one, is, is on the short term, something that you may have uh, forgot totally, because oil is very cheap, is, is at, on a short term prime. And we're speaking of about 10 to 50 years, there will be big problems with excess of easy oil. Easy oil, I mean oil which is very easily found. Uh, for sure, there's reserves in the Arctics, the reserves in very difficult uh, conditions. You find oil, no question. It will be very expensive oil, that, and, and it will be uh, also environmentally have that benign oil. So let's say the easy oil, easy gas, as it sees, uh, as it looks out, is, is that the demand of that goes up. Well, the recession may have done some bumps here, but the demand is going up. Not because of, of you or us here on the Northern Hemisphere, but because of the economic growth in in countries like China, India, and in the Southern Hemisphere. So when people get mobilized, uh, the, the oil demand is going up. But half of the uh, demand increase in oil is coming just from China. I think that if China would be like the United States in cars and in mobility, it would mean that you need to double the oil production. Now the wells that we have for oil production, the good oil wells, the production, supply production is getting down. So we have a clear gap here with demand and, and with with uh, uh, supply. What does it mean? I mean, for us, does it, it doesn't mean very much. I mean, if the oil is 200 or 250 dollars a barrel, now it's about 100. And you have to pay here in Finland uh, on the pump, you have to pay maybe two, two and a half uh, euros per litre. That's not the problem for you. But think on those countries again, in the southern hemisphere, which may use about 40 to 50 percent of their national income. 40 to 50 percent of GMB goes to energy. So if, if the oil is again very, very uh, expensive, I mean, those countries have no chances to, to uh, evolve in their, their prosperity. So finding substitute on oil, using oil efficiency, looking at sustainable transport, etc., will be extremely important because 98% of all transport, or all mobility, 98% is based on oil. So this is a, a, a trend to look for sure. Now the long-term trend, which is, is the main kind of issue with energy, is for sure with the CO2 emissions. Uh, and here again, we see the same kind of gap. Uh, the, the, the trend is going up, emissions going up, and, and where we should put land is, is on the blue curve. By 2050, here in Finland, or let's say in all the participating countries here, you need to reduce your uh, CO2 emissions by, let's say, 85-90%. 85-90%, I think all transport based on uh, CO2 based fuels and so on. So there, there has to be a tremendous shift in, in your lifestyle and in technology to, in order to get on this lower curve, which is necessary to, in order to, in some, in some way, save uh, the ecosystems. If we don't do anything, well, let's say let's a fair, and let's go to the, just along the red curve here, means that, that by 2050, they say, uh, let's say 28, they say, uh, that, for instance, about 50%, 60% of the Amazon is not green, but it's brown. They say that... 40%, 50% of all species on this planet will disappear by 2050, 2080, based on the very uh, rapid changes in the climate, which, which nature can stand. So this is for sure a big challenge. Now, then you may ask, is, it any, is there any chances to get on this curve that goes down? Any chances? Now, first you ask yourself for sure, how much does it cost? Do we afford that? So let me say that the, I can put a bill, very, very a kind of good bill is about 30,000 to 50,000 billion dollars of euros. That's the bill. And you may ask, well, ooh, that's so much, that let's forget the whole thing. But that was the bad news. The good news is that we have to, to share that among all of us, among you and me, <laughs> among us. And over 40 years, we said 2050 is the important day. So sharing among us, it means per day. The cost is per day. The price of solving the problem tomorrow is spending a cup of coffee per day in climate change mitigation. So the price of the cup, which is about one euro, one and a half dollar per day, that's your sacrifice. That's about the effect, economic effect. And, and always when politicians say, well, we can't do this. Well, we, this is too expensive and our, our economy will destroy it. I always say, look on the microeconomics. It's the cost of the cup per day per person for the next 40, 50 years, and that's the cost. So, so it's a, this is a collective effort. This is not that Finland or you or you would do that, but it's a collective effort, and if everybody's sharing this.